Father, we thank you and we bless you, God of heaven. This is the day, Jehovah, that you have made as your children. We shall rejoice and be glad in it because, God, you have made it for us. The devil did not make it, so the devil would not have any part to play in our day. You made it. It's a gift from you. We went to bed last night and you woke us up this morning. Through the night, we don't know what happened. You know, because you never sleep nor slumber. And that's why we're ever so grateful that you never leave us nor forsake us. You never leave us to the mercy of the enemy. Rather, Lord God, we are at your mercy, so you give us mercies, new, new mercies every day. Thank you, Father, for today. Thank you, Father, for this time. Oh, God, fellowship this morning, Kingdom Gospel Church. As we spend time, Father God, with you and with each other in the service, maybe online, but we know you are here with us. For whatever two or three gather together, you are there with them, maybe on air, mm -hmm. maybe down in the bottom of the ocean, the sea. It may be anywhere, oh, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, mighty Savior. We thank you, Holy Father. We bless your name, King of Glory. Jehovah, we worship and we adore you. Thank you for this time, the word of God being released from on high. It's not me, it is you, Jehovah, speaking to us. Thank you for the blessing that we come from your word this morning. We thank you in advance, oh God, for everything. God will bless and will honor you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, church, and good morning, friends, wherever you are connecting with us, perhaps maybe after the service, or you are listening to this word, you're watching the, the, the clip on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you may be seeing it. We ask that God will bless you, make his word good unto you, and you receive the maximum benefit out of this word this morning in Jesus' name. I pray your weekend has been good. I hope it has been good. I trust it's been good. But now I believe God is going to crown your weekend with his own, with his goodness as he releases into your life and my life this awesome world that we've been on since last Sunday. We began to teach last Sunday on living in uncertain world, in an uncertain world. Living in an uncertain world, in an unstable world. A world that is oscillating and vacillating, a world that is not stable. Everything is up and down and all over the place. Amen. We believe in because of the issues that we are dealing with globally. COVID-19 came. Some said in, in, in November of 2019, December of 2019. But we got it over here in the UK, Europe, sometime early 2020. Some say late January, some say February. But by March, we had gone into lockdown. Amen. And a lot of us have been locked down since March. Oh, four months and counting. Although the, 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 the lockdown has been eased. Now, because of the issues of spikes here and there all over the UK, particularly in the Midlands, they are now slowing down the easing of the lockdown. Very unstable. The world has no answer to the challenges that we are facing at this present time. COVID came with a lot of issues, economic issues. Businesses are, 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 are crippled, literally cri cri crippled. Things are happening that we've never seen before. We have no reference point. Yes, we might have had a pandemic about 100 years ago, but who was there at the time now to direct governments, to direct nobody really? We do have reference uh, materials and literature from, from before, evidence from before in the, in the archives, in libraries, but, but who was in government at, at that time to lead us today? Nobody. And so Church of God, we, we look to God for us as God's people to help us. Psalm 82 verse 5 is our main text. Yeah, I would ask you to please turn your Bibles with me to Psalm 82 verse 5. I would normally read from the New King James Version of the Holy Bible. Amen. Some can read from the NIV, NLT, whatever version that you have. But I'll read Psalm 82 verse 5 from my Bible. It says this, They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. That is the New King James. Amen. The NLT, the New Living Translation, says it this way. But these oppressors know nothing. They are so ignorant. They wander about in darkness while the world is, is shaken to the core. These, but these oppressors know nothing. They are so ignorant. They wander about in darkness, while the world is shaken to the core. The NIV says it this way, the gods know nothing. Mm -hmm. The gods with a small letter G, they understand nothing. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. The gods know nothing. They understand nothing. They walk about in darkness. 
all the foundations of the earth are shaken. And then the message translation says this. Ignorant judges, head in the sand judges, they haven't a clue on what's going on. And now everything's falling apart. The world's coming unglued. Ignorant judges, head in the sand judges, they haven't a clue on what's going on. And that's the point, people of God. Many are judging in government, in politics, in industry, but they haven't a clue what is going on. Everything is falling apart. The world is coming unglued. Why? Because this, this unseen virus and the issues it has brought is tearing the world apart. So we live in uncertain days, uncertain times, weeks and months. We're not sure what the world will be in November of this year. In Metango, we're just coming to August, September. Schools have been closed for God knows how many months. No, no GCSEs for the final year students. No A-level final results. Everything has been, it's been uh, 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 you know. Church, it's just, it's just an uncertain world, unstable. Oh, let me remind you. The word uncertain means not to be relied upon. Not known or definite. Amen? It means to be unsure of something. It means uncertain, undecided, unknown, doubtful in many ways. If you, are, if you are certain about something, you are sure of it. But when you are uncertain, you do not know. For example, you could say, I, I do not have, know the answer to this math question because I'm, I'm uncertain. All of four options. Eh, everyone looks correct, but, but I'm uncertain. I do not know. I'm not sure. Synonyms of the word uncertain will include words like unsettled, unsure, in doubt, unpredictable, unreliable, untrustworthy, undependable, risky, unstable, erratic, fluctuating, doubtful, wavering, vacillating, oscillating, faltering, and so many other words. Amen. So we live in this world that is described by scripture. The foundations are shaken. The world is coming unglued according to the message translation. But you and I, believers in the Lord, followers of the way. He is the way, isn't he? John 14, verse 6. Amen. Followers of the way. We, 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 we may be in the world, but we are not of the world. Which means we should not be coming apart or, 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 or uncertain or, 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 or doubtful. We should not be. And that is the key to this message. We may be living in an unstable world, living in uncertain times, but you and I must have certainty. We must be stable in our, the Lord our God. For the life that we live now is not ours, but it belongs to God. If truly you are born again. Amen. So for us, it means we live in, a stable, in an unstable world and in uncertain times. It is not our fault. It's just the way of the world. It is foolishness for us to think that because we know God, the world will quickly become stable for us. No, no. That is the nature of the world. However, in God, we are stable. We are certain in Him, even though we may live in an unstable, oscillating, fluctuating world that may fall apart at any moment. Amen? Because God Himself is our stability. God Himself is our certainty. Let me remind you, Psalm 125, verse number 1. Psalm 125, verse number 1. What does the Bible read? Psalm 125, verse number 1. Your Bible should read this. Well, if you read the New King Jesus, that is, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be removed or moved, but abides forever. Amen. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. Amen. The KJ21 translation put it this way. They that trust in the Lord shall be like, shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abided forever. Amen. And the Amplified says it this way. Those who trust in and rely on the Lord with confident expectation, are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but remains forever. Amen. The contemporary English version, CEV, says everyone who trusts in the Lord is like Mount Zion, that cannot be shaken and will stand forever. That is the point, people of God, that we trust God, we depend on Him. Therefore, 
we shall be like Mount Zion that can never be shaken, but will stand forever. Though we are in an unstable world, in uncertain times, but because we abide in him, amen, we are in him. So he becomes our stability. He becomes our certainty in an uncertain, unstable world. How does it happen? How will it happen? We are in the world. We are not of the world. We read it last Sunday, Acts chapter 17, 24 to 26. We are the ecclesia of God, called out of the world. But God has determined and preappointed our times and boundaries of habitation. Yes, God determined our preappointed. He didn't start today. He's already concluded it up in heavens, even before the foundations of the earth, of the world, should I say. So God already concluded that you and I will be alive in England at this time to go through this experience of COVID-19 and all the issues that has come with it. Regardless, our stability is in him. So in him we are stable, even though we may be in an unstable world, because by nature, we are not of the world. We'll be cut out of the darkness of the world into his marvelous light, the great marvelous light of his kingdom. So the king of the kingdom can look after his kindred, which we are. We are the subjects of the king, whose kingdom shall never, ever be, be shaken because it is not of this world. Amen. Oh God, don't push me to go there. Jesus said it. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight for me. But my kingdom is not from here. Even though I am here and the kingdom is here by the agency of the church on the earth at this time. Amen. We are in the world. What is the world? The New Testament uses the world. It actually is a Greek word called cosmos. C-O-S-M-O-S. -S, which refers to the inhabited part. Amen. Inhabited earth and the people who live in it. Which functions outside or apart from God. So there's no God in the earth. Now, let me say it again. The world, the world, W-O-R-L-D, is, is inhabited earth and the people who live in it, which functions outside of God. They don't live by God. They live outside of, by the rules of the kingdom, by the rules of God. So they don't know God. And that's why God came in flesh. For God so loved the world, so loved the world that he gave he gave a gift, a present of salvation to the world that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. And so the world as we know it is ungodly, without God, secular. Amen? That is why we have this established in the, in the world. However, we are in the world, but we are not of it. So the nature our, nature, our nature is of God. We are not in the light of God. Amen? Oh, remember, light can stay in the face of darkness. Always light shining to break the power of darkness. Darkness has no power over. That is why only the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ can save. Amen. The darkness of the of, of the kingdom of well, the darkness of the kingdom of darkness is nothing but death, damage, and destruction. But Jesus, the King of Light, of this glorious kingdom, Amen. Oh, He saves. That is why we are different from the world. So in him, we have stability. In him, we are safe, sure, and secure. Amen? Believers in Christ are simply in the world, all of us. Physically present, but we are not of the world. Our nature is different. We are not part of the values of the world. So we have the values of the kingdom. Amen. Go back and read Matthew chapters number five, six, and seven. Three chapters on, on the seven on the mount. All of the teachings that Jesus taught that are the values or the principles of how the kingdom of God works. I know you and I we talk more about the church. The truth of the matter is God, God thinks more about kingdom than the church. For the church is just it's only an agency of the kingdom on earth. But the kingdom is bigger than the church. Amen. So I believe we need to speak more about God's kingdom. It's the, it's the it's kingdom that cannot be shaken. Where there's no more, no rust, nothing destroys. Amen. There's eternal life, healing, salvation, deliverance, everything. Not of the world, but all of God. Whatever God is, is what you have in the kingdom. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hope. You name it. Uh, so, so because we are not of the world, we are set apart from the world. This means this is the this is what it call, it means to be to live to, to, to be holy. 
and living a holy, righteous life to be set apart. We are not, we are in the world, but not of the world. So we can function even in the face of the darkness of the world because we are not of the world. So we are set apart. We are not to engage in the sinful activities that the world approves and promotes. No, no, are we to, to, to retain the bland and insipid, corrupt mindset of, that the world creates? Through TV, social media, all of the ways of the world, all of the sexualization of everything. Amen? Rather, we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind according to the word of God. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Amen? Church, this is a daily activity. In this, what I've just said, is our stability in the Lord. Our certainty in the Lord. Living a life that is holy and that pleases God. Separated or set apart from the world. Not following the dictates of the flesh of the mind as the world promotes and advertises and tries to invite us and seduces us. But rather following what the scriptures say. What the word of God say. Keeping the scripture. Following God totally. With the whole of our hearts. Not divided one foot in one foot out. But both with planted in the immovable kingdom of Jehovah God Almighty. My question today, people of God, is how then are we to live in this un uncertain world? If we are, go we are going to live as we should live, as his ambassadors, representatives of the kingdom, the beacons of his light in, every, in whatever we go, in every community that, we, that, that he plants us. If we are to live, how are we supposed to live? And I said it last Sunday, we are to live by faith. By faith in God. Which means no matter what the world throws at you and throws at me, amen, we should not budge, we should not buckle. What is faith? Hebrews 11 verse 1 gives us a good definition of faith. It says to us, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, my God and my King. I love your word. And I'm sure you do too, my friend. Now, faith is the substance of things you hope for. Hope is future. Hope is your tomorrow. It's not there yet. But today, you're in hope. So the things we see you do will, will tell us and teach us what you're hoping for. Oh, are you hoping for God to bring you through COVID-19? Are you hoping for God to, 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 to bring you through to eternal, eternal life with him? Then let us see what you are doing. The things that you are doing give substance to that hope. Hope is in it. Hope is internal. We can't see it. What we can see are the things that you are doing that will evidence the hope you carry. It is not only substance, but it is the evidence of things not seen. Things not seen are things in the invisible, things that are internal, things that are beyond, outside of this natural realm. They haven't happened just yet. So the things we see you do, say, or whatever, how you conduct it, that is the evidence that will tell us in any court of law what you are hoping and believing for. Amen. Somebody made me a promise, Pastor Sonny, so and so, I'll do so and so for you at so and so time. And because they made me a promise, I began to live and conduct myself in a certain way. So all of it, the promise hadn't come, but I had to. So the way I was living my life and conducting myself is evidence and witness, mm -hmm. substance to the promises that hadn't come, but I was believing for. Same way, church of God. Oh, let me, let me share with you some, some scriptures quickly about, about faith. It talks about to you and to me. So if you are not going to live in this uncertain world, amen, live, not just live, but live victoriously over hunger, over death, over damage, over pain, over failure, over poverty, and everything else that, that this disease has brought. Listen, it has to be faith in God because those who trust in the Lord their God, they shall be like. Amen. So your trust in God is, is really the faith that you have, how you are depending on God, how you are hoping in God, that without him, mm -mm, there's no hope. Really, faith is the life we live in Christ. Amen. Let me share with you four key scriptures, and I'll, and I'll share with you also a few other things. Ten things, ten in a, in, in a way that faith does for us as we live in the Lord. Your Bible reads, or my, if you read the New King James Version of the Bible, Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse number 4. Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, 
but the just shall live by faith. Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. And so if you are going to live in this uncertain world, through these uncertain turbulent times, amen, it has to be by your faith in God, because it's very personal and very individual. Read it again. Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him. That is the way of the world. Proud, amen, or pride and arrogance. These three things are in the world. Three things we are told by, by the Apostle John. Amen. The lust, the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. These three things are in the world. Amen. Apostle John told us the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him. That is the way of the world. But the just is the way of the kingdom. This is what pleases the king. Amen. That his kindred, his subjects, they believe in him, they trust in him, they abide in him, they are totally dependent upon him. But the just shall live by faith. Who is the just? You and I, who's been blood washed, blood bought, sanctified, discharged, acquitted, justified. Amen. The word just means justified. Who are now righteous. Not because of our ability or what we have done, but because of this great work that the suffering servant king, Jesus the Christ, did for us at Calvary many thousands of years ago. In him, we become the righteousness of God. Ah, what an inheritance. Is anybody out there listening to me this morning or, or watching me this morning or whatever time you are in your, in your, in your time zone or in your continent or, or in the part of the world? Listen, if you are not in the kingdom, yes, please make haste and join the kingdom. Come to the king. His name is Jesus the Christ. Give your life to him. Ask him to come into your life. Give him your heart and your life. Make him your Lord and your personal savior. And lo and behold, he will translate you out of the darkness that is in the world into the great and marvelous kingdom of God where there's light and light and light forever. And I pray, God, that you do that ASAP. Delay no more. Amen. In fact, let me be bold to say, your life is at stake. Your life is in danger. We only find safety, security, amen, and life in Christ Jesus. Someone help me shout a big amen. Hallelujah. And so behold, the proud of his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by, by his faith. His faith. Not his wife's faith, not his husband's faith, not his children's faith, not his grandmother's faith. Your grandmother may have prayed into the kingdom, but now you're in the kingdom, you've got to trust God for yourself. Oh, I may trust God for you, but when you are born again, I, yes, there's a place I can pray and agree with you for, but essentially your life has to be lived by your faith. In fact, on that last day, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. Oh, I can't bow for you or confess for you, but you shall for yourself, and you will and you must for yourself on that last day. So from now, the judge shall live by his, his, or her faith. Amen. Romans 1.17 For in it, in what? The gospel. The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Glory to God. In it, in the gospel, church of God, in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. Galatians 3, 11. But that no one is justified by law in the sight of God is evident. It is not law, it is not works. For the just shall live by faith. That no one, Galatians 3, 11, amen, is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. It's not about fulfilling the law as we see in the Old Testament. Uh -uh. We couldn't do it. So Jesus came to fulfill the righteous requirement of the law for us. So that in him now, we have met and fulfilled every requirement of the law. That is why we can say the blessing of Abraham are ours because we are in Christ. Amen? <laughs> but we have bigger and better blessings than Abraham's. Christ, uh, uh, Jesus Christ, amen? For he is the mediator of a better covenant based on better promises. Far, far better than the promises and the covenant God made with Abraham. Yes, good promises, we receive it in Christ. But hey, the New Testament or the New Covenant is based on better promises. 
mediated by the one and only sinless Lamb of God, Jesus the Christ. Let me shout out a big hallelujah wherever you are. Amen. Finally, Hebrews 10 verse number 38. Now the just shall live by faith. Let me say now. Hebrews 11 says now faith is. And here in Hebrews 10 today it says now. Not yesterday but now. Amen. Thank God for yesterday you were alive. Today you are alive. Tomorrow I pray and I believe God you won't be alive. But now in this present time, in this present time, present moment, present day, now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition. But we are of those who believe God, amen, to the saving of soul. And to the end of the time, we stay in faith in God. In Jesus' name, let me shout a big amen. And so, church, if you and I are going to live in this uncertain world, this fluctuating, vacillating world, full of darkness, gross darkness, men groping, thinking they know, but they don't know, as we read earlier, head in sand judges, gods of this world, rulers of this world, all confused because the world is coming unglued. If you and I are going to live through these times, we must be unshaken in our faith and trust in God. What does it mean to live by faith in God? Let me share with you 10 things that I have gleaned from the scripture. Amen. Number one, you are justified by faith. You couldn't be a believer without faith. Oh, let me, let me share with you some scriptures. Please bear with me. I'm going to run through a few scriptures here. Amen. We need to hear God. Hear what he's saying to us. Hallelujah. Thank God for Kingdom Gospel Church. You are a word-loving church. And I'm so grateful to God that you love the word of God. Amen. And let me remind you, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So please keep loving the word. Be lovers of the word of God. Psalm 138 verse number 2 says, God has magnified his word above all his name. Amen. There's only one thing God judges us by. Did you keep my word? Did you obey my word? Did you follow my word? That is, let me just say, that is the one thing that God will judge you by. Everything we are talking about is about obeying the word. To receive Jesus Christ and be born again is what the word of God says. Forgive somebody is what the word of God says. So there's only one parameter, one criteria. Did you follow my word? <laughs> Hallelujah. And may we be of those who follow God's word, who obey God's word, who observe God's word to the end in the name of Jesus. Please shout a big amen. Hallelujah. So number one, we, the, 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 we are justified by faith. Since there, Romans 3 verse 30 says this, since there's no, no, no there, since there's one God, I beg your pardon, who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. That is how we are justified. One God, one God who will justify the circumcised through faith. Talking about the Jews, the uncircumcised, talking about the Gentiles, through faith. All of us is through faith, whether you are Jew or Gentile. Galatians 2 16, knowing that man is not justified by, by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. So for you to be justified, discharged, and meaning your sins wiped away, to be justified, it had to be by faith. We, did, we began in faith. We must stay in faith. Amen? That was the challenge Paul had with the church in Galatia. You began with the gospel of, of, of grace. How come you've now entered into the gospel of works? Who has bewitched you? Hey, that is not our portion in Jesus' name. So, number one, we are justified by faith. Number two, we assess the grace of God by faith. We assess the grace of God. I know we talk about grace, the unmerited favor of God, grace for this and grace for that, and the manifold grace of God, all of this, but our access to the grace of God. Amen? In fact, grace is so powerful. It's the answer to sin in Christ Jesus, that is. Amen. For where sin abounds, the grace of God abounds even much more. So sin has no power over you, the believer, because you got grace. So when you miss it, come back to God. Amen. Confess the sin, repent of it, and grace is available to restore you. And I pray you don't miss it anyway. But should it happen, that is what you do. And the Lord will restore you in Jesus' name. And I pray that encourages somebody. Amen. We are human, still in the flesh. We make mistakes. But if you do, remember, where sin abounds, the grace of God abounds much more. But your access to that grace is faith. Hallelujah. Pastor, where is that in the Bible? It's right there. Let me share with you. Amen. 
Romans 5, 1 to 2. Romans 5, verses 1 to 2. Therefore, having been justified by, we've been justified by faith. There you go. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So through whom also we have access by faith into this grace. So if you don't have faith in God, how can you assess his graces? His many, many powerful graces. Number three, quickly, we stand by faith. Amen. You are not standing because, because of, no, 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 your ability. It is the faith in God that makes us stand, that helps us to stand. Pastor, is that in the Bible? Of course in the Bible. Romans 11 verse 20. Amen. Romans 11 verse 20. This is what, what the Bible reads for us. Well said. Because of unbelief, they were broken off. And you stand by faith. Do not be haughty, but fear. Do not be proud, but be in reverence of God. That's what it means. Well said. Because of unbelief, this is Paul writing to the church in Rome, where they were, they were broken off. Talking about the Jews, they were broken off out of this olive tree. Amen. And we were grafted in. Amen. But you stand by faith. Do not be proud or don't be haughty, but fear or reverence God. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 24. It says, But those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God to us. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's our power to stand. We stand by faith. Romans 11, 20. Quickly moving on. Number four. We are saved. Guess what? Through faith. Is it a gift? Yes. But to receive the gift, you've got to show God some faith. Ephesians 2, verse number 8. Very simple. The Bible reads, Amen? For by grace you have been saved. Through what? Faith. So it's like grace and faith work together. Amen? The grace is there, but it's going to be through faith. For by grace you have been saved. Through faith. That not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Hallelujah. Isn't our king gracious? Listen, people, we should talk more about the king and this great kingdom that we are in. The kingdom of God is unshaken. It can never be moved. That is why we have stability in the world. Because we're in the kingdom. The kingdom is in the world through the agency of the church. So the pressures of the world, the principles of the world cannot affect the kingdom of God. Where the king is seated on the throne as king forever. But it's take faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, King Jesus. Quickly, moving along. Number, what number are we now? Number five, I believe it is. We, we are justified by faith. We assess by we assess grace by faith. We are we stand by faith. We are saved through faith. Number five, we walk by faith. We walk with God. W-A-L-K. We walk with God, we walk with man, we walk with the rest of the church by faith. Second Corinthians chapter number what? Five, I believe it's in verse seven. Second Corinthians five, verse seven. Very simple. For we walk by faith, not by sight. So if you are looking at the lapping of the waves in, of the world, if you are looking at the fluctuations of the world, if you are looking at the economic instability of the world, you will feel faint and collapse. So we walk by faith, not by sight. It is not walk by what you see. Amen. For listen, Ephesians 2 verse 8. You and I are his workmanship in Christ Jesus. Prepared beforehand unto good works. Which God has foreordained that we should come and walk in. Oh, Jehovah. Please, don't walk by sight. Sight means when you observe. It could be what you hear, it could be what you hear people say on the news or social media, what you read. It is, listen, it's walk by faith. Amen. It's not a blind walk because we have a great shepherd who is ahead of us. Amen. Who is leading us. Oh, you may not see him visibly. Amen. But he's right there by faith. Father, we thank you. Number six, quickly. This is what it means to live by, to live by faith. Our righteousness, the ability to walk with God, the kingdom, is through faith. Amen. Number six, righteousness is true faith. Hallelujah. Quickly, where is that in the Bible? Philippians 3, verse number nine. And to be found in him, not having our own righteousness, which is from the law, 
but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness which is from God by faith. That is why Matthew says, Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33, Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. Amen. So Philippians 3, verse 9 puts it this way. And to be found in him, not having our own righteousness, but, but which is from, from, from law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness of God, which is from God, by faith. Amen. That is how we are going to live through these turbulent times. Faith and faith in God. Everything is from him. All you need to do is believe, receive, and live. Amen. Believe, receive, and leave. Oh, faith. Believe God. Receive it, and then leave it. So you become the substance, become the evidence of the kingdom to others who may not be in the kingdom. Oh, Jehovah. So let your life, your light so shine. Let your life or your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give your Father who is in heaven glory for the life that you are living. See how it's coming together, church? Friends, I hope you are hearing the Holy Spirit this morning. It's not me. I'm learning just like you. I'm hearing just like you. It's going to be by faith. Total faith in God. Not maybe. <laughs> Amen. Quickly, I believe we're in number seven now. We understand by faith. Amen. Hebrews 11, verse number three. Or oh, we could read the entire chapter of Hebrews 11. You see the results of faith, the testimonies of faith. But in verse 3, we say, he said, by faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. So life is much more than what we see. There's a realm above and the realm beneath. Amen. Guess what? You reign with him, co heirs seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So by faith, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Amen? Number eight. I'm sorry. No, is it number is that, Yes. Number eight. We are kept by the power of God through what? Faith. Oh, my God. This is what it means to live by faith. We are kept by the power of God through faith. First Peter chapter number one, verse five. Amen? Your Bible should read this. Amen? And my Bible in New King James says this who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. First Peter 1 Peter 1.5 We who are kept by the power of God through faith. So you are kept by the power of God as you believe and live in Him. Who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Amen. Number nine, we must move along. My, my time is fast going. Guess what, Church of God? All of those challenges, even the devil himself, your victory. <laughs> you overcome him by what? Faith. We overcome the devil and every opposition that will ever raise against us by what? Faith. You see how powerful your faith is? So do not undermine yourself. You may not be the most eloquent of the preachers. You may not be a preacher. You may not be the front to lead a congregation. You may be somebody just doing your own business or working nine to five somewhere. But if you are in Christ, my God, you are mighty. Your faith is awesome. In 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 to 5, what do we read in 1 John 5? He says, verse 4, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Uh -huh. The uncertain world. So you are a champion over the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Oh, let me say that to somebody to remind you. I know the enemy has been lying to you. You are going to go with COVID-19. You will not, but I come to announce it today. If you are a child of God born again and truly know who you are and truly know whose you are planted in the kingdom, you overcome the world. And every challenge and everything that the world has to offer. The truth of the matter is, church of God, the world has nothing to offer us. Nothing. It is foolish to look back. The world has nothing to offer us. It's like Israel coming out of Egypt and they keep looking back. But Egypt was bondage. That is it for us, church of God. Our Egypt is the world. And he's called us out. Out of darkness into his marvelous light. We're not in the kingdom. No point in living, looking back. For life is in the kingdom. What you see in Egypt is bondage, captivity, and destruction. 
John 10, 10. The thief does not come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Does not come forth to do what? Steal, kill, and... But I have come that you may have life and have been more abundantly. Please stay in the light of the kingdom of God. Stay with the king of, the king of life. Stay with the king and his kingdom. Be a, a fully planted kindred. And let God glorify his name in your life. Hallelujah. First John 5 verse 4. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. How can you overcome some, something and then want to go back? You've already defeated the world in Christ Jesus. That is what it means. Oh, I know you talk about the, the enemy defeated. No, but I'm saying to you, yes, you on this call, maybe a baby watching me after this after this live 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 meeting. Yes, you have overcome the world. You have defeated the world. You are a champion over the world because of your faith in Christ Jesus. Verse five says, "Who is he who overcomes the world?" but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Do you believe? Ah, then the world and everything that has to offer is subjective because you've already overcome. May that be our collective, individual and collective testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me shout a big amen. Finally, number 10. Let me just state the obvious. We live by faith. <laughs> yes, we live by faith. Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20. That is how to live by faith. That's what it means. In to live through this uncertainty, live by faith. Amen. Galatians 2, 20, Paul wrote to us through the church in Galatia. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. Uh-oh. But Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That is you and I alive today in the Lord. So the life we live now, yes, that life, yes, yours and mine, we live by faith. Amen. <laughs> I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Church, as I prepare to close it, amen, I am glad that the Lord will send us this kind of word at this time. Amen. There's so much up, upheaval in the world, so much stresses and distresses, so much, so much panic and anxiety. You know, <laughs> I'm telling you, so many people have lost their lives. But for you and I, God's children. Amen. We will live through these uncertain times, through this uncertain world, but it has to be by faith. I like to pray the prayer that Jesus prayed for Peter, for all of us, that our faith will not fail. Amen. We will see that in Luke chapter 22, verses 31 to 32. In Luke 22, Amen. 31 to 32. Lord Jesus Christ knew what was, what was ahead. Of course, he knows all things. And the Lord said to Peter, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that, when you're, when you're, that, that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Jesus, our King, said, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. He didn't pray that his money would not fail, or that his house would not, or that his job would still be there. His business, his fishing business will not collapse. He said, I have prayed, amen, that your faith, isn't it amazing? I did, I, he said, I didn't, he didn't say that I have prayed that your marriage would not fail, amen. So I have prayed for you, for you, that your faith should not fail. Because if your faith fails, everything else fails. In fact, that faith is the life we live in the Lord. So if your faith fails, come on, life is finished. Oh, you may still be alive, working, any money, partying and all of these things. But really, I, mean, I don't need to, to stay the overs, do I, church? 
And so that is the prayer I am praying, Church of God, as I prepare to close it. That our faith would not fail. That on the day of adversity, our faith would not fail. Proverbs 24, verse 10. If you faint on the day of adversity, your strength is small. Faith is the strength of your life. That I was, Jesus, where is your faith? He asked his disciples many times. Oh, you of your faithless generation. And so, so some he says, great is your faith. I have never seen such great faith, not, not, not in all Israel. So some he said, faithless. So some he said, where is your faith? And to some he said, great faith. Graduation of faith. And I'm praying today that we shall be of those whose faith will not fail in them. Even though COVID-19 may be ravaging the world and the economy and whatever else is doing, that our faith in God will, should, will not fail in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. In conclusion, Church of God, let me take you to Mark chapter 11, verses 22-24. Mark 11, 24 says this. Have faith in God. Mark 11, 22. Have faith in God. Simple. One verse. Mark eleven twenty two. Have faith in God. So if we are going to live, living through in this uncertain world, living in this uncertain world, through these uncertain times, where COVID and so many other things are happening, where there's so much powers of that is playing about, those of us in the kingdom of God, I didn't say those of us in the church, there's a difference. Many come to church, but they don't even know the king of the kingdom. Hello, I'm talking about kingdom people, the kindred who are joint heirs, kindred of Jesus in the kingdom of God. Amen. So those of us in the kingdom, we must not shake. Have faith in God. Verse number 23, Mark 11. For surely I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, be removed from because not the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Amen. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them, and you will have them. In verse 23, we see the enemy of our faith. What is the enemy? Doubt. Because... He says, for assuredly, assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart. It is and, and Satan, no, 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 he's not even talking about Satan here, and does not doubt. By faith, you've overcome the world and Satan. But now, if you begin to doubt, so doubt becomes the number one enemy of your faith and my faith. So if you don't doubt, doubt is, is the contrary opinion to what makes for faith. Doubt looks more and focuses more at the opposite of what faith is. Your real enemy, my real enemy is doubt, child of God. Just like belief, doubt is internal and manifests in fear as belief manifests in faith. When we conquer doubt, we conquer fear. Then and then only we can live and continue to live by faith. Church, I submit to you and I submit to myself. That we will live, we can, we shall, and we must live through this unstable world, unstable times. But it has to be through this thing, this life we call faith. So church, have faith in God. Let's live by faith. Walk by faith. For we are justified by faith. We stand by faith. We assess grace by faith. I commend you and I commend myself. Commend all of us in the kingdom. For the just, all of us, shall live by faith. Thank you for hearing God today. And I pray as you have heard, indeed, you will continue to live and to, and to respond to God by faith, in faith, through faith. For without faith, it is, it, is, it is impossible to please God. May your faith and your life please God. May my faith and my life please God. May all of us please God in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Until next time, it's Pastor Sonny Agado, Kingdom Gospel Church. God bless. Bye for now.